What's up, y'all? Um, I'm going to talk about the difference between harmony and balance and why, potentially, why and how you are frustrating yourself by trying to achieve balance. So, first of all, a couple housekeeping things. There's something going on outside, cleaning out of the gutters, housework situation, so there may be some, uh, there won't be loud noises because I'm far from them, but that might be distracting if you're easily distractible. I can't do anything about it. I do apologize. Uh, and trust me, I'm just as distracted by <laughs> them as you are. And there's like a dripping water sound as well. Again, what are you gonna do? Um, this is where I've already set up to record, so I'm just gonna do it. Um, distractions and all. And yeah, if this topic gains any kind of traction, I'll redo the video in a better setting. But for now, I'm just gonna work with what I got. And um, so I wanna talk about the difference between balance and harmony because there, it's really sort of like the cool thing to be like, oh, I'm you know balanced and well balanced and I've got my, even my internal parts in balance, like my right brain and my left brain or um, my masculine and feminine dynamics if you're into that or um, my organizing creative side, right? However you define those terms and I'm just using those terms as the example of where this can play out, but this is pretty pervasive. So the problem with balance, and this funnily enough, I actually learned this from uh, one of my pastors. He, I remember him teaching, he was like, well, you won't be surprised because he's a revivalist, but he was like, I have no interest in balance, like none whatsoever. He was like, I try balance and really all it is to me is just a little bit of everything and I don't want that, I want all of everything. And I was like, I, have never felt so seen. <laughs> Even though he's preaching to the whole room, it was like straight to my heart. I was like, yeah. And I've kind of, you know, been thinking of that for quite some time now and noticing how a lot of people, when they attempt to achieve balance, actually end up belittling parts of themselves that want to just be explosive. Because, and here's how I want to frame this. Balance is 50-50 but balance is also a hundred, a hundred. Balance is also a thousand, a thousand, right? Balance is also like a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli. <laughs> balance is also a milli and a milli, you know? <laughs> um, and so I, I want you to can start thinking about what in my life Am I, have I put a lid on? Because this these other parts, maybe that's their capacity. And while there is some wisdom in that, right? Because we don't wanna be t come to hyper anything, I guess. Um, you know, maybe for instance, this could be valuing your alone time and your social world. Maybe this could be like we mentioned earlier, your um, creative side and your structured and organized side. Maybe this could play out in your spirituality and your um, earthly endeavors. <laughs> um, maybe this could be the balance between um, speaking your mind and holding your tongue, right? Like, and the problem when the goal is balance is that doesn't really give you a guidepost of success, right? Because when do you know that you're balanced? Like the effort of that is never ending. Whereas if, you're, if your goal is harmony, you absolutely know when you are and are not in harmony, right? Like you can feel it and hear it and sense it. So like, for instance, we'll use the example, like I said earlier, of your creativity and your structure and organization side. Like, you know if you have a lot of creative ideas without really either the capability or the drive or the discipline or maybe even just th the structured thoughts enough to bring that creativity down to earth. Or conversely, you also know if you're too bogged down in the day to day in the numbers and the ABCs and the one, two, threes that you're not in any way valuing your creative side. Now, there's nuance to this, right? Because some people I maybe don't want certain energies expressed through their being and some people are going to be generally prone toward 
certain expressions and not other expressions, certain personalities and not others. And so this isn't to say you should be any type of way. This is simply to say like, like a beautiful harmony, there's lots of beautiful harmonies out there, right? And that's what's so great about music and people is, you know, you could have one person sing a tone and another, or a one person sing a note and another person sing a note and their tone is so different. It's gonna sound different because that person's tone. So I'm, you know, I wanna make sure what I'm not trying to say is that you need to be a certain type or amount of these energies. Like you could decide that harmony for you is more creativity than structure, as long as that feels harmonious. Because like think of actual musical harmonies, right? Like you've got the low note, you've got the mid, and you've got the high notes, and then you've got a lot in between. And no matter where you're at, you could stretch it a little bit more, right? So however you want these to play out in harmony is is gonna be subjective and it's gonna be up to you. And you get to decide what that looks like. And I just, I wonder what it would look like if, you know, a lot of spiritual people, revivalists, Christians, mystics, um, you know, anyone who's just really after the examined life, whatever we wanna call it, um, is, you know, at, at some point has probably come across a teaching for balance. And I just really see that as unintentionally like if you're teaching that, you're not doing anything wrong. Um, but the unint unintentional consequence of that potentially could be that it's actually, um, like I said, putting a lid on what would otherwise be extreme. And so let me use this in the example of speaking your mind and holding your tongue, right? Like. You don't just want to speak your mind literally in every scenario and never hold your tongue and be a bulldozer. Um, that's going to come across as rude. That's going to cause people to not really want to converse with you, to be quite honest. And um, that's going to get old for everyone around you. Plus, you're always going to need the feel to assert yourself in that particular way for you to feel like you're strong and powerful. Versus if you're always holding your tongue, you're going to be the one who's steamrolled somewhat constantly, right? So we don't necessarily want a balance between speaking our mind and holding our tongue. We want both of those parts of ourselves fully online, so to speak, fully activated, fully willing at the same time to come out, depending on the situation. So really you can kind of see them as like different parts of yourself where like this version of you is gonna have certain needs and this version of you has certain needs and you wanna fulfill everyone's needs to the fullest potential. So obviously within a time-based system, you're not going to be able to satisfy every nuance in every moment. But if you take care and consideration, slow down and really consider the options of which part of me needs satisfaction the most in this moment, which part of me, you know, I think of this as like, okay, when I lay my head on my pillow tonight, will I be more proud of me that I spoke up or will I be more proud of me that I held back? And so that kind of helps me personally gauge. Um, you could also just cons like, or for instance, like let's say you've been the kind of person who's bulldozed for a little while at least to correct it. You might really need to just speak your mind just about every time you feel like it, even though that feels so strange and awful and clunky because you you need to correct and then you'll have both potentials, right? But to bring them to balance almost brings everything down in, in a way that just doesn't quite feel right to me. So I wanted to just make this quick video about that and I would love to hear from what in what areas of your life you find this playing out and if there's any parts of your personality you've realized yeah, you know what, I am kind of tempering over here because this is so vibrant over here. So rather than balancing, how can I just elevate, right? Like right, the, it's sort of like a rising tide raises all ships, right? Like how can I just bring everything more to the surface? How can I be more me in every way such that I'm not feeling the need to sort of shrink or, or you know what I mean? It's that shrinking and that holding back um, that we don't want because even when you're you're holding your tongue you can do that fully present and that doesn't require like a shri a shrinking right so um really the way that i like to put this is that you are in every situation making a strong powerful stand for yourself so you want to just 
create scenarios or uh, you want to make decisions such that when you look back on them, the scenarios are you've handled them in a way that you're proud of. And what's going to probably be required for that is probably less of an emphasis on balance and more of an emphasis on fully showing up to every situation in a way that is in alignment and resonance and harmony. So alignment, resonance, and harmony rather than balance. So because you can be fully creative and fully structured, you can be fully willing to speak your mind and fully able to hold your tongue. You can be, um, you know, completely active and completely at rest at the same time. So that's sort of more what we're after, uh, harmony rather than balance. So I hope that helps. I hope that helps sort of unleash <laughs> some exuberance, uh, some more passion uh, and vitality and sort of pop the lid off of maybe the unintended. Like I said, if you're teaching balance, I don't want to make you feel bad. It's unintended, but the unintended consequence of teaching balance potentially could be that in sh a shameful lid is put on our more extreme parts. So just figure out how can I let these extreme parts coexist with the rest of me in a way that doesn't ostracize who I do really care about, that does attract the people in my life who vibe on the same uh, frequencies um, or who vibe with the same energies or who just vibe, <laughs> right? Um, and then maybe you'd actually become the person to, to bridge uh, if you feel like these parts are seemingly disparate and you don't know a lot of other people doing well, what you want to do, uh, maybe you can be the beacon or maybe you'll end up attracting people where you're like, oh, there actually are a lot of people who are also just as extreme in different areas and ways as me. And I just wasn't finding them because I wasn't like them. And so anyways, hopefully this helps unleash <laughs> and bring everything up, uh, go from 50, 50 to a milli, a milli, and let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope that this was helpful. I love you beyond reason and I trust you with you. I hope you have a really great rest of your day or night.